Hello, boxing fans. Welcome to another episode of World Championship Boxing. And today we're going to talk about another fight recap, some recent fights. And I'm joined once again by Juan Silva. What's up, man? Hey, good afternoon, Logan. And uh, Merry Christmas to you and all the listeners as we do our final fight recap of the year. And I'm going to go off on our, uh, he's the runaway winner for Pussy of the Year. He is the 2019 Pussy of the Year. So the first award is being given out to today's show, the fucking son of the legendary Julio Cesar Chavez. He is the most overrated fighter in the history of boxing. He never once beat a significant fighter. He beat a bunch of cab drivers, a bunch of homeless men. Got the title because Jose Suleiman ran the WBC and always famous Mexicans in the WBC gave him a title. The first time he stepped up in in competition, he was schooled and exposed by Sergio Martinez. And ever since Sergio schooled him, he's been a jobber to the stars. He loses every time he faces a live body. This fight, like I said a couple of months ago, was a mismatch in epic proportions. There's no way in the world he could have won this fight. And he knew this. He didn't even train. The weight limit was 168 pounds. He came in five pounds overweight and said, fuck it, I'm not trying to make weight. So Danny Jacobs was like, you know what, I'll kick your ass anyway. But (laughs) since you were five pounds overweight, why don't you give me a million dollars extra off your purse? Or I'm not going to fight you. And Chavez said, all right. Junior gave him the million dollars off his purse. And he took a, a ferocious. Dollars. Yeah. He took a ferocious beating. He had no business being in the ring. He, he's had no business being in the ring since he started. You cannot in boxing. We always known, if you look at the history of boxing, since the 1800s, the greatest fighters, the best fighters, the even real good fighters, the very good fighters, come from impoverished backgrounds. You cannot grow up sleeping in silk sheets and living in a mansion and become a great fighter. It's impossible. It's never happened. It never will happen. He was given everything because his father was a multimillionaire. His father was the legendary Julio Cesar Chavez. You cannot be a fighter, an all-time great fighter, and come from a rich family. It's impossible. It's impossible. Well, well, you gotta unless have the you, hunger. Oh, unless you no, go to prison, maybe. No, yeah, maybe yeah, you go to prison for to, like ten years. Yeah, if you went to prison, but not if you grew up with caviar for breakfast, silky, no way, yeah. a mansion, a driver, private school, the whole nine, and you're gonna become. A great fighter. And then when his career started, he was fed one fifth after another. I have a huge library of fights on video and DVD. I have over 50,000 fights in my collection. I did not... Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. was not on my collection. I did not record any of his fights until he fought Sergio Martinez. Because I knew this guy was a fucking stiff. All right? He's beaten a bunch of bums. Never beat any live bots. Sergio schooled him. And ever since then, he's lost to one fighter after another. Hopefully, Friday night, after he quit, the motherfucker quit. He took a beating uh, after the fifth round. He told, his, and Freddie Roach, Freddie Roach, you should be ashamed of yourself. How the hell? Uh, the, the, the Parkinson's have must take it over his body completely. Because he's training, you're not training senior, you're training junior. Do you know the distinction? You're not training. <laughs> yeah, Do you know weird. what year it is? Come on. You're training this stiff? This is probably the worst fight. You, this, 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 this guy couldn't lace your fucking uh, 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 shoestrings, when, your bootstraps, when you fought. And Freddie Roach is a journeyman fighter. Get the hell out of here. Why are you allowing yourself, one of the greatest trainers of all time, top five easily, to train this stiff, this tomato can. This kid has made a lot of money with the least amount of talent. And he is the pussy of the year for 2019. The man refused to make weight. He failed the drug test, so they moved the fight to Arizona where there's no 
local commission, there's no state commission to sanction a drug test. It's unreal. And I don't blame Danny Jacobs. He's getting a big payday to fight a guy who's got no shot in the world of beating him. So go ahead. You get the easy money. But Julio but how, how does this guy how does this guy have so many fans? Is it just because of his dad? Oh, and the fans were going crazy. Well, I think he lost his fans after this night go because when he quit, yeah, they, they were throwing that trash at him. They were throwing trash at him. This is the, this, they, they they turn from a baby face to heel. <laughs> they should have threw trash at him when he when he started. It wasn't going to happen. This is like now Oscar De La Hoya has a nephew who's a decent fighter, Diego De La, Diego uh, Diego De La Hoya. Diego's a, a decent fighter. I mean, you can make a claim that he's a good fighter, but he wasn't raised by Oscar. He he came from a a, a middle class family. He didn't come from a rich family because Oscar is only taking care of his siblings and and and, and his pops. His mom, mom already died, so if Diego's a decent fighter. I can never see Diego being a great fighter because even though he's he's because he's, he's from a middle class family, but he's a much better fighter than. Julio Cesar Salad Jr. This kid, oh, and he comes to the ring with the blonde hair and the blue streak. What the fuck's <laughs> going on? I think he was high the entire week of uh, 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 of the fight until the night of yeah. the fight. He, he, was, he was high. You see his he dad, man? You see his father's, and, like, look of disgrace. <laughs> and, and you know what's sad? And you know what's sad? Julio, his father made a lot of money. And his father doesn't have any of that money he made because his father snorted that money away. A and B was robbed blind, was robbed blind by Don King. So I also think that they used each other. Julio Cesar Chavez because Julio Cesar Chavez fought till he was damn near 50 because he was broke. He squandered his money on women, drugs, and Don King, which anybody on the Don King are right. So Don King fucked so many people, man. So uh, Junior was exploited by his father because his father knew, okay, I'm going to capitalize on my name. I can't fight anymore, but my, my son, well, he has my name, and I'll be in his corner, and this is why Junior has all these fans because people thought they were seeing the second – Mexican fans thought they were seeing the second coming of the father. And the father exploited his son. The son exploited the father to like, look, I got to find a way to keep living and keep having these silk sheets and, and, and keeping this mansion. So I'm going to use my father's name and the same formula that his father used, except his father had real talent. Yes, Julio Sr. beat up a lot of cab drivers, but he was a great father. I can't deny that. Junior never had any business in the ring. I blame it. You talk about his father. You mentioned his father. I blame it on both the father and the son. They're equally culpable for this for, for this sideshow that has been Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. since the beginning of his career. And now the sideshow has finally ended. Anybody that sanctions a Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. fight from now on should be stripped of their promoter's license. I, if, I, if I was any super middleweight, light heavyweight or middleweight, look, I don't want to get in the ring with this guy. There's something you, you, you can't learn anything. Danny Jacobs, all he got Friday night was an easy paycheck. He yeah, got hit with trash, a, too. Yeah. Oh, because he was in the middle of the ring. He, he, he yeah. should have ran out of there the minute this guy quit. <laughs> yeah. He was getting hit. He's like, hey, guys, I, I was here to fight. You know, hit me with it. <laughs> this guy, he, this is un, unreal, and he is the 2019 Pussy of the Year for being overweight, for failing a drug test, and for quitting. Quitting. Quitting because he's got a, he, his nose is bleeding. Oh, my nose is broken. You've had well, he said his hand was fight. broken. You've had fight and fight with broke. No, I, uh, whatever it was. I I, uh, I think he just wanted to run back to the to the locker room and get another line. I wouldn't fucking want it. Yeah, because come his on, trainer said on, it was Pop. his his his, yeah. uh, his trainer said it was his uh, his Ooh, Freddie Roach. Freddie Roach said it was his nose, and then he said it was his hand. Yeah. So. Yeah, they yeah, both yeah. Lie. Well, they they can't get the, well. You, you can't get your story straight with Freddie Roach these days because the Parkers is taking over his, his his brain. And later on, we'll be talking about another guy who doesn't look like he should be nowhere near a ring. But we'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, 
whether it was a broken nose, broken arm, broken heart, broken feelings, whatever it was, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Bye-bye, Mr. Pussy of the Year. I don't ever want to see you again. All right? This will be the last time I ever mention your name on this program. Next week when we do the awards show, we will have said he won the award without mentioning his name. Fuck you, Julio Cesar Salad Jr. By the way, there was a great fight on this undercard. There was a great fight. Julio Cesar Martinez against Christopher Rosales in a tremendous fight. Tremendous fight. fight. Another fight added to an incredible year of boxing. And um, the zone would have been best just having that fight as its main event and fuck Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and Danny Jacobs. I mean, that that's what saved that fight, that card, was that fight. Uh, congratulations to Martinez, who had a tremendous, tremendous 2019. And he is an action fighter to, 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 to continue to watch in the light flyweight, flyweight, and super flyweight divisions. There's so many matchups for him. Um, I would love him to see... I would love to see him fight uh, Donnie Nietzsche's, um in the future. Well, we'll see what happens with uh, with Julio Cesar Martinez and uh, Christopher Rosales. He gives everybody everybody problems. He will continue to be a lively gatekeeper in that area. A, a tremendous war, a tremendous fight. Congratulations to Martinez. Now on to last last night's card. Well, can you just talk get... about talk about Martinez's strategy though, because he was the he was the smaller guy. But Martinez is a tremendous body puncher. He's one of the best body punchers in the, uh, on the planet right now. He goes after you because he's the smaller guy. He's not going to try to outbox you. He's coming to you, and he's going to beat his last fight against Charlie Edwards, in which, in which they overturned the decision. He knocked Edwards out, but they claimed because he hit, and rightfully so, Edwards is out on his feet. I was down and out, and he had hit Edwards with an extra blow, and they called. They they changed it to a no contest instead of a, a knockout win. And um, Edwards, instead of fighting Martinez in a mandatory remake, rematch, just gave up his belt. The belt that Martinez won last night. Martinez goes to the body. He attacks you. He he's an aggressive fighter. I mean, he's not going to have a long career because. He takes a lot of punishment. He's a very aggressive fighter. Those type of fighters do not last long in boxing. But while he's here, he's giving everybody hell. All right, so let's go to the next one. Well, we're going to talk about last night's card. Last night's card. And last night's card, before we get to the main event, which was a tremendous fight, the rematch between Tony Harrison and Jermel Charlo, uh, Errol Spence was finally appeared in public for the first time since his almost tragic car accident. And um, Errol Spence, one of my favorite fighters in the last 10 years, one of my two or three favorite fighters on the planet, I think he's suffering from some type of severe head trauma, CTE, or possibly or possible brain injury. Because he spoke last night like he had Parkinson's. He was slurring. His speech. He, he did not look right. I mean, physically, his face, other than uh, a scar above his right eye, looked the same. He looked the same, his face, other than the scar above his right eye, that he did before the accident. But listen to the way he, he spoke. Listen to his speech. It was very, very slurred. I'm afraid for this man if he continues his career. Uh, uh, I, I, he just didn't sound right. Yeah, I didn't see it, so I can't evaluate it. But you, that's what you—that's your uh, take on it. So, and you uh, might congratulations, be right. and, and congratulations to Brian Kenny, Brian Kenny, who announced last night's card, and it's, it's weird. Brian Kenny works for both Premier Boxing and Matchroom as an announcer, which is <laughs> you see the difference. Lennox Lewis when he's working with uh, Chris Myers or Kenny Albert is horrible. Horrible. Lennox Lewis is at his best when he's with somebody as good. Brian Kenny is a tremendous boxing announcer. And Lennox Lewis was real good last night. Why? Because Brian Kenny is a real good announcer. Brian Kenny interviewed Errol Spence Logan and he asked him, Do you want to fight but Terrence Crawford? Premier hasn't been mentioning Terrence Crawford. 
They act like he doesn't exist. Brian Kenny, because he's a true boxing fan, he's been a boxing fan for years, uh, and he's, he's a he's a he's a student of the sport. Brought it up, and Spence said he would love to fight Crawford. But um, you, you watch the interview. If you if you uh, DVR it, go back. It's it, the interview happens before Charlo and Harrison get into the ring. All right. Just did he break any news about when he's coming back? He said between May and August. Wow. That's mm-hmm. surprising. Brian Kenny first asked Errol Spence, uh, when do you see you returning to the ring? Errol Spence said May or June. Then, you know, he's rambling and then then he says, Yeah, I'll be back I'll be back by the summer and Brian Kenny, uh, you try to make sure was like, Oh well you said May or June, uh, so by August maybe. Yeah, yeah, uh, so, uh, 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 yeah. By the summer, I'll be fighting. Watch the interview. I mean, uh, okay. people are going to criticize me because they said I've been hard on Errol Spence, but we know how dangerous sport boxing is. They showed the entire clip of the the accident. I don't know how the fuck he survived that shit. Remember, he was ejected from his car with no seatbelt. He's got no broken bones. That that you can see, he was walking. Other than the scar above his right eye. His face looks good. The pla- I guess the plastic surgery, that money came in handy. And it was, they did a great job. Just, he doesn't look, he doesn't sound like the Errol Spence, the 90s he fought him. He sounds like a boxer that's taken a ton of punishment at the end of his career at the age of 39, 40. And, and, well, we know Errol Spence hasn't taken much punishment in his career other than the Porter fight. <laughs> right, right. All right, so, so did I'm, you want to talk about yeah, Dubois so, versus Fujimoto? No, no. no. That, that Fujimoto had no business being that fucking. <laughs> they keep feeding Daniel. Daniel Dubois has a lot of talent. He's got a lot of naturally gifted power. He could be a force. But they got to stop feeding him these bombs. He's beating one bomb after another. And he's going to the Julio Cesar Chavez School of Matchmaking. All right, next. Oh, mm-hmm. hey, you weigh two fifty? Oh, you're a construction worker? All right, we're gonna. We, you want to make twenty thousand? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't want no. That I I I saw the first round. I said, man, get the fuck out of here. I, I turned that shit off. I want to talk about what was a very good fight last night: the Tony Harrison or Jamel Charlo rematch. This was a very very good fight. Very we'll talk about fight. what happened the, in the first fight. Yeah, go ahead. The first fight was a very boring fight. This was the exact opposite. But in the first fight, I had Charlo winning eight out of 12 rounds. Ch- Charlo, because uh, Harrison was standing back trying to counter, and, and Charlo did most of the action. He was the more aggressive fighter. He landed many more punches. He hurt Harrison twice. Harrison barely seized on him, and Harrison won a unanimous decision the worst robbery of last year. It was a horrible decision. And this was the rematch. Now, the rematch was the total opposite of the first fight. Second fight, it was Harrison that was landing the more effective punish of punches. First round, I gave Harrison. Second round, Charles dropped Harrison with a nice right cross. So, that's a 10-8 round for Charles. Rounds three, four, and five were very close, and I had Harrison winning two of those rounds. After 10 rounds, I had Harrison winning by, by one point, 95-94, and winning six of the first 10 rounds because he was the better counterpuncher. Charlo was throwing wild shots throughout the fight, and Harrison was countering nicely. Uh, nice counters by, by Harrison. Harrison was fighting a very good fight, and I thought Charlo needed a knockdown, at least another knockdown to pull the fight out, in the last couple of rounds. Lever Frown, he landed, at early, he landed a spectacular left hook. Knocked Harrison uh, down. Then, he almost knocked Harrison through the ropes into the, into the first row with the next knockdown. Referee could have stopped that right then and there. Referee gave Harrison the benefit of doubt because Harrison is the defending champion. And um, was laid up against the ropes. Charlo threw a, bar- a barrage of punches. Finally, the referee stopped the fight. Charlo wins the fight. I thought at the time, Logan, it was a come-from-behind victory. 
he was ahead on all three scorecards going into the eleventh round. So I, I don't know. There was a lot of there was a lot of close rounds. There were several rounds that could have gone either way. So I can't come off and say, man, what were the judges looking at? Because there were like three, four rounds that it could have that could have gone either way. But Charlo did not put the judge into question. Knocked him down twice. Had wins by TKO in the eleventh round. Retains the title and right now is the best fighter at 154. And oh, I would be surprised if there's a third fight. And Harrison deserves a third fight because he was outperforming despite what the judges had. I thought he was outperforming Charlo until Charlo came back and knocked him out in the 11th round. Yeah, it was a great fight. Excellent fight card put on by Fox because the first two fights, you had a major upset in the first fight. Carl Baldaris, one of PBC's up and rising prospects, got knocked the fuck out by his opponent, Jerome, in the sixth round in the first fight. And then in the second fight, the African heavyweight, Effie Ijagba, was given a cab driver, and the cab driver almost knocked him out. He got back up and stopped him in the fifth round. He's another one. He keeps fighting stiff. Uh, Jock, but the minute he, he gets in the ring with a real good heavyweight, not even a real a good heavyweight, a decent heavyweight, he's getting put to sleep. Uh, he, he's a stiff. He's got a big right hand. He, everybody thinks they're Deontay Wilder now. Oh, I, if I could just land this right hand. Yeah, yeah. Good luck on that. See, yeah, right. What do you think, though, uh, Charlo's going to do next? You think he's going to fight Harrison again? I, uh, I think to me, that would be his best option. Um, Jaime Mungaya moved up to middleweight, and Charlo's not going to move up to middleweight because his brother's at middleweight. He's at junior middleweight. So he either is going to fight Harrison a third time, fight J-Rock Williams to unify all the titles after J-Rock beats up Rosario uh, next month on, on Super Bowl weekend. When's our next fight recap going to be? The schedule for the boxing shows are next week. We're doing our annual Fight of the Year Awards. The week after, we're doing the Boxing Decade Awards for the 2010s. And then, in three weeks, we go back to our greatest performances in boxing history. Uh, man, it's been man, it's been months. But we go to, we'll, be going, we'll be going to that. And then, unless something changes between now and then, the, the next fight recap show will be February 23rd, the night after the February 22nd, the day after the February 22nd, Rematch between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Um, 2020 will continue to be a great year for boxing. 2019 was a spectacular year because there are so many great matchups that could be made. And we already got two big matchups made. We got Fury versus Wilder, the rematch. And we got Vasily Lomachenko versus Teofimo Lopez in April in what will be an incredible fight. I, that fight can't beat. Nothing but incredible. You got the best young, fastest fighter coming up in boxing against one of the greatest fighters of the last 10 years. Will it be the new guard pushing out the old guard, or will it be the old guard showing the new guard? I'm not ready to go yet. This will be tremendous. Uh, Lopez doesn't run. Uh, Lopez is an aggressive boxer puncher, and um, he really believes he believes in his power, so it's not going to be a boring fight. Lomachenko will have to be at his greatness, at his best, to beat Lopez. He can't put in a – the last few fights, Lomachenko's put in a B performance. He's got to put in an A performance to beat Lopez. Did you think that Charlo has stuff to work on, given what he went through with Harris? He's got to work on his defense. He was coming in rushing there to – Charlo is a very good boxer. He's got a beautiful left jab. And when he fights tall, he's tremendous. But when he's an aggressive fighter – He's sloppy. He needs to go back to boxing. He was lucky that he didn't walk into anything that Harrison landed last night that hurt him. And Harrison's got a nice right hand, but in these two fights, the, the, that right hand not one time was a factor. Charlo's got to be careful. More careful defensively. So, and whenever they were going toe to toe, Harrison would get the better of him. You you, yeah. you notice that? But Harrison is a very good counter puncher, and he showed the yeah, proof that is. last night. Yeah. He's great at that. That's. Yeah. He came in, and that's why he got knocked down because he was counter punching at that moment. <laughs> like, and he got caught. That, he got caught right. in between. Right. He got caught, and he never recovered from that. 
that he deserves a third fight, and he could beat Charlo. A third fight, if if he sticks to the plan, my only problem with Harrison is he's not active, active enough. There were some rounds last night I gave Charlo because Harrison, while he was landing more effective punches, wasn't busy enough, wasn't active enough. He's got to up his activity rate in order to, uh, if they fight a third time, to beat Charlo in the rubber match. Well, generally speaking, what do you think about father-son trainer situations? History of boxing, it has not boded well. Uh, Roy Jones split with his father early in his career, Roy Jones Sr., uh, and it was best for him because Roy Jones Sr. Was, was, was hard on Roy Jones, hard on Roy Jones, very hard. When they split, when he split with his father, he didn't have the pressure of his father on his back. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya was trained early by his father, Joel De La Hoya, and Joel caused Oscar there was nothing that Oscar could do to please Joel. So when Oscar started fighting as a pro, he didn't use his father as a trainer. Smart move by Oscar. But his father would be in the front row, and after the fight was over, his father, instead of congratulating Oscar for his victory, was like, man, you fucked up on A, B, C, and D. You can't do that. <laughs> so his dad was – sometimes you can't have a dad that critical. It fucks you up. You know? His like father is very, wrong. very, very critical. Oh, my God. Joel De La Hoya was, a, was, was like the biggest thorn in Oscar's side. Uh, Shane Mosley and his father, uh, Jack Mosley, first of all, Jack Mosley was no real trainer. The only tra- fighter he ever trained that was a great fighter was his son. His son was carrying his father. But it got to the point where uh, something happened. He fired his father midway through his career. Uh, historically, it has not worked. Yeah, Mayweather. Uh, well, yeah. Mayweather was at his best when his uncle Roger was training only reason Floyd Sr. became his trainer excuse me, became his trainer again is because Roger got very sick. Oh, I got you. Mm. So, and by so, the time Floyd Sr. came back in, 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 in Floyd's career, the roles had reversed. Floyd Sr. could not tell his son what to do at all. I got you. And he but yeah. and he wasn't he wasn't didn't he he only trained him for a couple fights, right? Well remember with Floyd turned pro, his father was locked up in prison. Right. It was his uncle, Roger, that was his trainer. And then when Floyd came out of Floyd Sr. came out of prison, Roger stepped aside because because he felt that was a family obligation and he stepped aside. But then when things were working out between Junior and Senior, Junior fired Senior and went back to Roger as his trainer. Yeah, and, he, and he's done best under Roger. Yes. He was at his best when Roger was his trainer. And we talked about how he incorporates strengths from both of them. Um, yeah, because his, his father was a defensive fighter. Roger was the best offensive fighter of all the Mayweathers, and he incorporated both parts to be to become the best Mayweather. Yeah, by far. All right. Well, we'll be back then next week with the – Fighter of the year, the Booker of the year, all the different categories, and we've already yeah, named we've our got, pussy we've got, here. We've got Fighter of the year, Network of the year, Fight of the year, Comeback Fighter of the year. We'll be talking about all those awards uh, next week. Right, and then the week after, we're doing the of the decade. Same our award, evaluation. but for the, de- for the for the for the for the for the two thousand tens and. When the two when 2010 started, we weren't even doing this program. I didn't start doing this program. You started in 2010. I didn't start doing it with you until 2011. And um, when when I started doing this program with you, boxing was was like the toilet bowl of sports. Nobody was talking about boxing. I mean, it, it, was, it, it was it was dead. Matter of fact. You might have been one of five boxing podcasts. Now you got a whole bunch of boxing podcasts. <laughs> oh, there's so many now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So when I started this with you, boxing, other than Mayweather and Pacquiao, nobody was looking at boxing. The heavyweight division was dead, dead, dead. And now it was the goes, to, yeah. Now going into 2020, boxing is on a huge uprise. Uh, the most successful of all the combat sports. So right net right now. So wow, what a difference ten years makes. Indeed, indeed. 
and we're going to keep covering it here on World Championship Boxing. Thanks for listening. It's funny when you when you started the show when you started doing the show, uh, you had a Bernard Hopkins Roy Jones pay per view that did fifty thousand fucking buys. Oh my god! That's now, right. I remember. Yeah, and now ten years later, wow! It, that was right there and there. That was when boxing was at, was at its lowest point. First of all, Roy Jones had no business being in the ring, right? And people knew that he wasn't going to win the fight. And you're going to put this but fight on But he was a name. Yeah, but not not name enough. <laughs> 50,000. 50, right. There was only 50,000 well, fools out there. Yeah. Now, today, yeah. by boxing is seen all over the world uh, uh, on a weekly basis. You've got PBC, ESPN+, Plus, uh, the, uh, the, the Zone. you got all these uh, – you've got all these fights every weekend – a throwback to the eighties when cable television and network television was showing three, four fight cards a weekend. That's the thing yep. you have uh today. Yeah, so we're good. it's the golden age again and uh we're mm-hmm. gonna be looking at it. All right, one silver man, we'll wrap it up here and we'll be back next week. I'll talk to you tomorrow about the movie Almost Christmas in our Christmas movie review for Logan's movie reviews. So we'll talk then. Have a good one, man. Talk to you more, big man, later. Thanks, everybody, for listening.